Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. You guys know how much I am into the clean girl aesthetic genre of fragrances. I am here for it. I'm all about it. I can't stop talking about it. You already know. But a category I love even more that really feels like me, the perfumes that fit into the cool girl category. And listen, I'm not sitting here trying to be like, oh, I am the shit. I'm just saying that my fragrance style and taste really resonates with fragrances that definitely have edge and character to them. That is what I'm all about. So these are my top picks right here. Okay, this is the guide to the cool girl perfume aesthetic. So not only do I really resonate with this kind of vibe, but I love reaching for these fragrances when I really am looking for a confidence boost. So if you're ever not feeling like your most confident self, I urge you to reach for a perfume that makes you feel that way. It can really affect your mood. And you know, when you smell good, you feel good. We have, an <laughs> why am I laughing? It's not funny. I don't know. I just feel like a broken record. Sorry. The amount of times I talk about Oud for Greatness, but it just makes my heart sore, so I can't help it. Oud for Greatness is the motorcycle biker chick that's just wildly freaking hot, like mind-blowingly hot. She is so sarcastic and witty, you cannot keep up, okay? If you try to play her game, if you try to play back, she will just <laughs> pummel you into the ground. You will never be as quick as her. Like, she's funny and she's sweet. This girl walks by and everybody is turning heads. They don't know what just hit them. They don't know, they don't understand this otherworldly woman, okay? This is the queen, king, what you, whatever you call it, of oud. To me, this is my favorite oud dominant fragrance. It is so unbelievably rich and dense, but incredibly well-crafted, smooth, sexy, sultry. And it is balanced so perfectly with saffron that adds this incredibly intriguing sweetness to it. If it was missing the saffron, I would say this would be like a 100% masculine fragrance. But because of that, whoo, that, that saffron just gives you the little inkling of a chance that you might have a chance with this girl. <laughs> that, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of far reaching though. But oh my goodness, it is so incredibly addictive and intoxicating. This is one of the strongest fragrances in my collection. I am an over sprayer and I can only spray this three times or it'll be too much. Anyone that I personally introduce this to is mind blown by this fragrance and they're just like that is incredible holy shit i've never smelled anything like that and i'm like you know <laughs> i know and you are so welcome like it is my pride and joy to introduce oud for greatness in somebody's life i'm like yeah i did that i introduced this masterpiece to you your mind has now been blown. Once you smell this, you will never go back. It is like opening the gates to a fantasy world you didn't even know existed. We have a little bit of lavender and nutmeg in here, giving it a little bit of spiciness, a little bit of like an herbally touch, and there's no leather listed, but I do definitely get like a leather overall vibe and presence to the fragrance. But main things, okay, are saffron and oud. It is deep, it is rich, it is heavy and it is good. Next up, whew, okay, I haven't talked about this in a minute. How many of you have been here since I was talking about Zara's Ebony Wood? This is freaking fantastic, oh my gosh. This is niche level at such an affordable price. I'm, I'm so impressed with this and it lasts like crazy. You only need a couple sprays and it's strong. It does the job. And I don't reach for this very often just because you have to be in a specific mood for this scent. It's very unique and very particular, but oh, is it good. Again, another unisex scent. You know what? Actually, mm -hmm. every single one of these fragrances that I'm talking about today are completely unisex. 
anyone and everyone can wear these. This is dark, deep, and mysterious, okay? This is a vampire in an enchanted, damp forest where it's just rained. We are mainly getting, of course, naturally, ebony wood in here. It's a very dark, rich wood. It's just rained. It's also quite spicy. We have cloves and pink pepper, and it's not listed, but I definitely get a very dark cherry undertone to this. So layering this with a cherry fragrance, match made in heaven, and this will do a fantastic job at deepening up and giving more complexity to uh, an already existing cherry fragrance in your collection. I actually use it to layer more often than I wear it on its own because I just really love the depth and character that it adds to other fragrances and then it tones down this very specific DNA, like just a little bit. And then that will also make this scent a little less intimidating. Cause like I said, it literally smells enchanted, like a fantasy fragrance worn by a vampire. I've said this before, but I feel like this is Damon Salvatore in a perfume, I'm just saying. Another magical smelling perfume to me is Diptyque's Eau Dwell. And <laughs> I said this in a last video that this smells like the signature scent of a tinker fairy to me. Thank you so much for all of you that validated me that were like, yes, I know what you're talking about. This is a fantastic vanilla for people who aren't into gourmand vanillas and they want something with a lot of edge to it. It's not sugary. It's not very sweet. It's balanced so well. It smells incredibly natural. It has a woody green feel to the fragrance from the juniper. We have a lot of resins in here. So like I imagine this kind of sweet sap coming from the trees, cardamom, black tea, pink pepper, giving it this dry, fresh spiciness. It's herbal, aromatic. It's just fantastic. And by far my favorite scent from Diptyque. And this is a fragrance that I think marries the categories of the clean girl aesthetic and the cool girl aesthetic perfectly in one. Next up we have BDK's Velvet Tonka. And I think this is quite underrated from the house, but it's really fantastic. This is by far my favorite almond fragrance. It is so cool. It is a dark, edgy, bitter almond, and I love it. It smells so unique to anything I've ever smelled. And then just a little bit of a disclaimer, I did not use this much of the fragrance. I actually purchased a partial just because I don't wear almond fragrances too often. And although this is almond and tonka bean heavy, this doesn't read nutty like 99% of the nutty fragrances I smell because I, I just cannot stand nutty perfumes, but this is so good. It has some tobacco and amber wood in here, which just makes it, makes it for me. And just a hint of a dark rose oil. A hint, oh, you okay there? A hint of a dark rose oil in the background. If you're not into rose, don't be afraid of trying this because you already know I am not. And again, it's not listed, but I do detect a slight cherry undertone to this, which almond can sometimes lean. So again, I'm telling you, layer this with a cherry in your collection and it's like, mm, disrespectful, Disres disrespectful how good it is. A little bit boozy from the bourbon vanilla. It's like this booze that's been sitting and aging in this like amber wood barrel with the accents of tonka bean and almond. It's just, oh, it's just cool. It's just cool. Rosendo Matu's number five. I swear to you, the more I smell this, the more I wear it, the more hooked I get. I don't think it's possible to get even more hooked but I do. I would not be surprised in the slightest if they mentioned a mystical note in the note breakdown. I wouldn't even question it. I'd be like, yeah, I smell that. This has such a juxtaposition to the scent to me because on the one hand, it is so bold and confident and just demands presence. This is probably my loudest perfume in my entire collection because I'm not kidding you. I'll just take the cap off, smell it, and that scent will be stuck in my nose for a half hour. It is truly insanity how it just clings to absolutely every single 
possible molecule that comes into its presence. But then on the other hand, it is a very airy, sparkling, translucent, like cloud of a scent. So we have like two very different energies here. It's confident, it's demanding of attention, but then it's also like very whimsical and pretty and airy. One of my favorite notes ever is saffron and this just does it right. Oh my gosh, does this do it right? It is like the perfect amount of sweetness. It's not too sweet, but completely draws you in. And I am telling you the amount of people, the amount of people that I've introduced this to that have just like, ah! stopped in their tracks and they're like, that is incredible. That was my favorite scent because I make samples for people in my life. This is a show stopping perfume. It is incredibly exotic and the amber is like warm and inviting, but it's a translucent airy amber. This is not something that is very deep spiced, dark, intense, like Middle Eastern. I love amber as a note. It's one of my favorites, but when it's really, really intense and harsh, like it's just not for me. So this is gorgeous. And then a creamy, fluffy vanilla. Again, not too sweet. A sensual freaking musk. Very alluring. You smell freaking sexy if you wear Rosendo Matus number five. Also, if you want to make any of your fragrances last longer, give them a boost, throw on number five. It pairs so well with so many different scent profiles. So talk about cherry done right. Cherry done so just freaking right. Soradora's Mandorle. This is outstanding. And the more I wear this, the more I'm just so wildly impressed with this fragrance. Listen up, okay? This perfume has three distinct different stages. We're gonna start out with a blast of like a cherry liqueur in the opening. Some people are like, oh, there's no actual cherry in the fragrance. Yes, there is. Fragrantica sometimes, unfortunately has the notes wrong. If you go on the Sotodora website, it mentions an icy cherry in the heart note. And it is like a knock your socks off, like knock you off your feet kind of cherry. This is an extract de parfum concentration and boy, oh boy, does it deliver. This baby will last all day long. It will cut through the cold, any situation, any bad vibes. So we start out with a boozy cherry, a freaking blast of it. Then as we go into the mid, let's say about 15, 20 minutes later or so, this fragrance smells like a sister to Parfum de Marley Herod with some tweaks, but a definite sister with again, still that cherry note. Then hours later into the dry down, it changes completely again. And then it becomes this super smooth, boozy, sweetened suede kind of vibe. It's crazy like how drastically this fragrance will change in these three different stages. This right here, is the cherry fragrance that far exceeded my expectations. This is the fragrance that took cherry and truly brought it to a whole different dimension level. And the list of notes here is just delicious, absolutely delicious. And it is so smooth, incredibly well blended. So obviously we have fruity, boozy cherry, and that lasts throughout the whole life of the fragrance, except for in the way deep dry down that becomes far more subtle. We have Tonka vanilla caramel, but it's never too sweet. It's a gourmand, but it's not something you can just straight up eat, not at all, because it has so many cool notes that give it depth. We have a extremely smooth leather, suede, cashmere wood. Absolutely the standout from the Soradora collection. I am very excited to see what they come out with in the future. And I also have a discount code for this one if you guys want to try it out. On a 10, we'll get you 10% off on the website. And everyone who has tried this is like, oh, Anna, you were right. And then my favorite woody vanilla has got to be the Seven Virtues Suntal Vanille. Wow, 
This is so incredibly well done. And you guys, you can get this at Sephora for a good price, but this is niche level perfumery right here. I mean, it is actually <laughs> a niche um, fragrance, the Seven Virtues, since they just do fragrances, but you know what I mean? It's at a much more affordable price than other niche fragrances. This is one of my most complimented scents. I feel like the most me and so cool and grounded when I wear Santal Vini. This is a blast of dry sandalwood. It has a very natural wood chip kind of scent to it. The vanilla is not too loud. It's a supporting note. It's not like a sweet sugary vanilla. It's there to round everything out. We have a lot of fresh spicy notes in here, cardamom, pepper, it's resinous, it's woody. And then we have a coconut note in here that gives it a creaminess as well. Not in a milky lactonic way at all, but there is a smoothness to it. Like as if you, I don't know, blended the sandalwood wood chips together with a little bit of coconut milk. <sighs> I'm really pulling this description out of my ass. It's so good. It is just, the perfect blend of all these notes. I could not come up with something more perfect combining these notes. Oh my word. And this is definitely not a dupe to La Labo Centaur 33, but it is absolutely in that scent profile. It's like the sister to Centaur 33. This is much smoother, not as aromatic, not as harsh, not bam in your face. However, this has amazing performance. I only need a couple sprays and I'm filling the room. I am telling you, when I walk into work, the moment I walk through those doors, they can smell me from yards and yards away. Absolutely fantastic. And this wears beautifully year round. Killer signature scent. Maison Margiela's Replica Jazz Club. Oh my gosh, the way this has me in a freaking chokehold. This is beyond sexy and confident. <sighs> On men and women, I feel like my best self wearing this. And when my boyfriend wears this, I'm just like, mm, come here, come here right now. This is one of the best tobacco fragrances I have ever smelled. My first love from the Replica line. And if you love this scent profile, but maybe you want more sweetness, babe, just layer it with a vanilla. I personally think it's literal perfection, but if you're in the mood for a little bit more sweetness, it already has an existing vanilla note. It's definitely more toned down, but that note goes beautifully with this scent profile and it's extremely transportive. This literally smells like being in an old rustic wooden bar that has history and class in Brooklyn, New York, like in the 20s or something. It just smells like a story, a night to remember. It's dry, it's woody, it's tobacco uh, with some fresh spiciness from pink pepper. We have some sage. The rum is so good, so smooth. It's not like a blast in your face of booze, but it's definitely there. Like adding to the environment. Wow, wow, wow. I will never get enough of this. This will absolutely be a repurchase till the day I die. Now this next one is my other favorite tobacco fragrance. Parfum de Marley Herod is probably most likely my number one favorite fragrance of all time. The way I just absolutely adore this is unmatched, incredibly smooth. And I've mentioned this a couple times before, but I usually am not down for a cinnamon note, but the way it is done in here is perfection because it's not too much and it's not like a dry, spicy blast in your face of cinnamon where it just like dominates and takes over everything in the fragrance. It is giving you like this cozy, sweet, gourmand spiced apple cider vibe. There's no apple in here and that's wild to me because it smells like the most refined, luxurious apple cider note in here ever. I wonder if maybe it's the osmanthus because that note can definitely turn fruity. The vanilla, whoo, super smooth, super rich. This is a 20 out of 10 fragrance for me because it encapsulates 
everything and anything that I could possibly be looking for in a fragrance. My favorite fragrances are fragrances with edge, character, depth that have a gourmand touch. And this is that to perfection. A sweet, enticing, alluring incense. I love this because it's like a sweet fragrance, but it's not too sweet. It's not too much. It's balanced, of course, with these gorgeous, deep, woody notes, the tobacco, incense. It's just absolutely captivating because it's so incredibly sexy, mouth-watering. Like, I cannot pull away when I smell this. This should come with a warning label on it because it's dangerous to wear this in front of other people. It's mysterious, attractive, and sexy, and then also very inviting, very cozy, and it has this come here vibe to it. Maison Crivelli's Iris Malikan has the cool girl category down to a T. Wow. This is outstanding. I am so, so glad that I tried this, that I sampled this, because just going from the notes, I really was not intrigued or really cared to smell it because I was just like, from the get-go, I was like, that's not gonna be for me. It's incredible. So please try it, just sample it before you roll it out because it smells very different to me from what the notes would convey. Like obviously, yes, I can pick up on some of the notes listed, but I just mean the overall experience ended up being very different from what I expected. It's a hard one to describe. It's an earthy fragrance, but it's not too earthy. Cause I saw some of these notes and I'm like, I swear if this smells like dirt or like straight up herbal plants, I don't want to wear that. But no, this is so sophisticated, edgy, cool, and addicting. This is a masterpiece right here. I am wildly impressed. Um, I talk about Hibiscus Mahajad quite often on my channel, but Iris Malikan is my favorite out of the two. Love them both. But out of the two, this one has my heart. This has a gorgeous, super creamy, luxurious, powdery, elegant oris or iris with also a prominent note of a creamy whipped vanilla that is so enticing and alluring. That's the note that ties everything together. Oh, the leather is extremely smooth, extremely smooth. And it has a bit of this fresh, foresty, well-traveled vibe to it. A little bit of an experience of like being amongst the trees, some fresh spiciness. It has a little bit of warmth to it. And as it dries down, the longer it sits on your skin, a little bit of this white chocolate background kind of peeks through. Wow. It is going to take me a lifetime, <laughs> I feel like, to get through this bottle because you only need the tiniest amount. I have been wearing this and it doesn't look like it at all. It's just really strong. You don't need to overdo it. Don't do that. I feel powerful, unstoppable, and confident when I wear Iris Malikan. Please do not blind buy this, okay? This is one you absolutely need to sample. This is a polarizing scent. You will either love it or hate it. It will speak to you or it just won't be for you. But I can genuinely say I've never smelled any other fragrance like this on the market. And it really blows my mind just with how well done this is. You guys, my favorite Moogler fragrance is getting discontinued. Moogler's Angel Muse EDP. So if this sounds like your cup of tea, Get it now while you can, okay? This is my warning, I am letting you know. I already have my giant backup bottle waiting for me. And it's gonna take me forever to get, to get through this because this is an amazingly powerful scent. I love it. So I will hopefully have this scent in my life for a very long time. This is incredibly nostalgic to me because Angel was my signature scent for like two years. Genuine signature scent. I do prefer this one just because after several years, the patchouli got just like a hair strong for what I wanted. And this is just gorgeous. The patchouli is still a main player, but it's gonna be a little toned down in comparison to the OG. Patchouli, as you may know, can sometimes lean chocolatey 
and it does do that in the angel DNA, but they've also added a hazelnut spread. Mm, note to this, listen, if you wanna smell incredibly unique, First of all, just the scent itself. You wanna smell cool. This is it, but also on top of that, since it's getting discontinued, like hello, you are truly going to smell like no one else. It has a vetiver giving it this dry, woody, earthy feel, and then pink pepper. I swear, you throw in a wood and some spices in a scent and you've instantly <laughs> pretty much got a cool girl scent. Why Moogler is discontinuing their best, most original scents is truly beyond me. Now they're just creating more basic designer scents like everybody else. Love that. Next up, BDK's Gris Charnel x -Trait. And the original perfectly falls into this category as well, but I've been talking about it a lot lately and I wanted to shed some light on the x -Trait. Also, if we're talking which is cooler out of the two, it's this one. This one definitely has more punch and oomph to it. Definitely more of that edgy factor. This is going to be more woody. Sandalwood, cedar, vetiver. The fig is toned down a little bit. We have added patchouli and vanilla. The vanilla is what does it for me in the dry down. I swear to you, woody vanillas are some <laughs> my favorite fragrances ever. It has to be my top scent category. Like if anybody asked me like, what are, what kind of perfumes do you like? My go-to response is woody vanillas. There's also more cardamom in here. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. It is deep. It has a true presence. You only need a couple sprays with this. It's going to fill a room. The Gris Charnel fragrances are also some of my favorite tea scents they just do it right. It's aromatic, it has an earthiness, but a real sophistication, like a Parisian elegance to the scent. A light powderiness. The overall scent comes across mainly dry to me. Dry, spicy, woody, and then that creamy factor comes in a little bit more as it dries down with the fig and vanilla. So nice. And the Gris Charnel fragrances are also one of my most complimented scents. People find it very captivating. Guys, listen, I don't know what voodoo magic <laughs> is in Lil Labo's Another 13, but it is something else. This is a hard one to describe because we have a lot of molecular type notes that are in here, but it is by far the best kind of fragrance that fits into that category. I will say, like all of the fragrances I'm talking about today are like a I'm here to show up kind of perfume. Like I am cool. I know it, you know it. Another 13 has that understated cool vibe. This is the I'm not trying to be cool. I just am in my entire essence and being. This definitely has an ambergris vibe to it where it's this salty, sexy skin feel. We have Isoe Super Ambrette, so it's musky, enticing. It draws you in, has like a transparent, light wood note, and it just sticks. It sticks around. This has incredible performance. It smells just a little bit earthy, European, chic. A little bit of a sexy cologne undertone in there. I just bought this. This is our third bottle. My boyfriend and I, obsessed. Ub. Obsessed. This is the scent where like if you get this on your clothes and you give it to your significant other, I guarantee they will not stop clinging onto that article of clothing. They're gonna sleep with it. They're gonna bury their face in that sweater. So that completes my list of cool girl fragrances. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!